Myocardial perfusion imaging or MPI is a crucial diagnostic tool. It helps doctors assess blood flow to the heart muscle, detecting coronary artery disease. The goal is to see if enough blood reaches all parts of the heart, both at rest and under stress. Early detection can prevent serious heart problems and guide treatment decisions. Stress is a key component of this cardiac test, usually achieved through physical exercise. However, not all patients can exercise adequately due to conditions like arthritis or lung disease. Pharmacologic stress agents like Lexiskin offer an alternative. Lexiskin, the brand name for regadenosin, is a selective A2A adenosine receptor agonist. It dilates coronary arteries, increasing blood flow to the heart muscle, mimicking exercise. Lexiskin is particularly beneficial for patients who cannot perform adequate exercise. This includes those with physical limitations or medical conditions preventing vigorous activity. Lexiskin provides a safe and effective way to stress their heart, ensuring necessary cardiac assessment. The test ensures these patients receive the same diagnostic clarity. It is a valuable tool in modern cardiology. Thorough patient preparation is essential for a successful Lexiskin stress test. Proper preparation ensures the accuracy of the test results and prioritizes patient safety. Healthcare providers must clearly communicate all instructions to patients. Adherence to these guidelines minimizes risks and interferences, leading to reliable diagnostic information. A significant part of preparation involves dietary restrictions, particularly avoiding caffeine. Patients must avoid coffee, tea, decaffeinated products, sodas, chocolate, and certain pain relievers for at least 12 hours before the test. Some centers may recommend a 24-hour restriction. Caffeine can interfere with Lexiscan's effectiveness by blocking the adenosine receptors it targets. A comprehensive medication review is also crucial. The healthcare team must know all medications the patient takes, including prescription drugs, over-the-counter medicines, supplements, and herbal remedies. Certain heart medications like beta blockers may need to be temporarily stopped. The ordering physician will provide specific instructions to ensure the test's accuracy and patient safety. The informed consent process is a mandatory step. Healthcare providers must explain the Lexiskin procedure thoroughly, covering the purpose, steps involved, potential risks, and benefits. Patients must have the opportunity to ask questions and provide written consent after understanding and agreeing. Proper setup is crucial before Lexiskin administration begins. An intravenous IV line will be inserted into the patient's arm. The patient will be connected to an electrocardiogram ECG machine. Blood pressure will also be monitored. Emergency medications and equipment must be readily available. The administration of Lexiscan is a quick process. Lexiscan is supplied as a single-use pre-filled syringe. It is administered as a rapid intravenous push. Immediately following the Lexiscan injection, a saline flush is given. This ensures the full dose of Lexiscan enters circulation. Shortly after the radio tracer is injected, common radio tracers include Technetium 99M Sestamibi. After administration, patient monitoring continues. The healthcare team watches for any immediate reactions. Blood pressure and ECG are closely observed. Patient comfort and safety remain the top priorities. Continuous monitoring of vital signs is standard practice during and after Lexiskin infusion. ECG monitoring helps detect any arrhythmias or signs of ischemia. Blood pressure and heart rate are closely tracked with any significant changes noted and addressed by the medical team. Lexiscan is generally well tolerated but common adverse effects include headache, flushing, shortness of breath, dizziness, and gastrointestinal discomfort. These side effects are typically mild and resolve quickly on their own. While rare, more significant adverse reactions can occur, requiring intervention. Aminophylline is the specific reversal agent for regadenosin and can be administered intravenously if needed. Emergency protocols should be in place for such situations, though the need for aminophylline is uncommon. Following the radio tracer injection, there is a waiting period to allow the radiopharmaceutical to distribute throughout the body. 
The duration of this waiting period can vary, typically ranging from 15 to 60 minutes, depending on the specific radio tracer used and the imaging protocol. During this time, the patient is usually asked to rest quietly. Once the waiting period concludes, the imaging phase begins. The patient is escorted to the nuclear medicine imaging room and lies down on a special imaging table. The table is part of a gamma camera system, commonly using single photon emission computed tomography, SPECT. The gamma camera detects the radiation emitted by the radio tracer, creating images of heart blood flow. During a SPECT scan, the camera heads rotate around the patient's chest, capturing data from different angles. The patient must remain still to avoid blurring the images. The imaging process is painless and typically takes 15 to 30 minutes. The nuclear medicine technologist plays a vital role in this process. They prepare and calibrate the imaging equipment, position the patient, and explain the imaging steps. Throughout the scan, they monitor the patient and equipment to ensure high-quality diagnostic images. After image acquisition, the technologist performs initial data processing using sophisticated computer software. The raw data from the gamma camera is reconstructed creating cross-sectional images of the heart. These images display the distribution of the radio tracer with necessary corrections applied for clarity and accuracy. The processed images are then sent to the physician for interpretation. The physician, often a cardiologist or radiologist, interprets the images. They review stress and rest perfusion scans, comparing them side by side. Areas of reduced radio tracer uptake indicate decreased blood flow. The location and severity of defects are noted. Physicians differentiate between ischemia and infarction. Ischemia is a reversible reduction in blood flow. An infarct results in scar tissue, a fixed defect. A comprehensive report details the findings. The report describes the size, severity, and location of defects. Results are integrated with the patient's clinical information. Results are communicated to the patient. Findings are explained in clear terms. A follow-up plan is developed. Open communication ensures patient involvement.